Welcome to worship from Covenant Presbyterian Church in Columbus, Ohio, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church USA. I'm Reverend John Carlisle, the bridge pastor here for the next several months. This morning's service of worship is a gift from the Presbytery of the Twin Cities area. Chaplain Kate O'Brien Soltow will lead the service. The sermon will be by Reverend Gregory Bentley, pastor of Friendship Presbyterian Church in Huntsville, Alabama, and co-moderator of our national 224th General Assembly. Our session approved this pre-recorded service as we transition to live streaming next Sunday, August 23rd. While no one will be able to sit in our pews during the worship service, I look forward to virtually seeing you next Sunday. Welcome to worship. Welcome and good morning. Thanks for joining us in worship this morning. We're grateful to have you with us. My name is Jeff Jappinga. I'm the executive presbyter of the Presbytery of the Twin Cities area. 60 congregations in East Central and Southern Minnesota and far Western Wisconsin. Committed to serving together in the ministry of the Presbyterian Church, committed to supporting each other in the ministries to each of their communities. The Presbytery of the Twin Cities area was an early adopter of the Matthew 25 initiative of the Presbyterian Church USA, committing itself to building vital congregations, eradicating systemic poverty and dismantling structural racism. We're proud to be a part of that effort, proud to make that a focus of our work, not just as a presbytery, but in all of our congregations and in the ministry that we do. This morning, we welcome to the pulpit the Reverend Gregory Bentley, co-moderator of the 224th General Assembly of the Presbyterian Church, along with our own ruling elder, Alona Street Stewart. Gregory is also pastor of Friendship Presbyterian Church in Huntsville, Alabama. Gregory and Alona are strong supporters of the Matthew 25 initiative, and we are grateful today for Gregory's presence with us and for the word that he has brought. We also thank PTCA member and chaplain Kate O'Brien Salto, who has written the liturgy for today and will present it with Gregory. Come, let us worship God. Thank you. 
In the repetitions and steadiness of life, we live as a community of faith, communing and finding comfort in the familiarity. Seeing God in the love we share, seeing God in celebrations of new life and legacies, feeling the confidence of knowing God is there. The patterns can ground and prepare us for the interruptions and inconsistencies we face, or they can make us feel thrown and caught off guard. God is there in the off guard moments, tending to our faithful resiliency, reminding us that action requires care for self and others. Let us gather today in this new and creative way remembering the care we have taken to endure, to stand firm in our faith, to be courageous, to be strong, to seek justice, and to be mindful that all we do is to be done in love. We have an opportunity, as we confess today, to examine within ourselves how we have been seeing the world. And through this confession, we can imagine new possibilities for ourselves. Please join me in the prayer of confession. God of love, you are always present through the steady and the unfamiliar times of life. When the interruptions to the familiar occur, we can fail to trust our own resiliency, focusing on fear, forgetting our spiritual practice, and forgetting to care for our health. We can fail to see how God is holding us. We are often distracted by the racing thoughts that take us away from the mind of Christ, not seeing what is real. Forgive us, God, for the times when we have not tended to our own resilience thereby hurting others in the fatigue. Forgive us when we have taken more than we need, have been easily angered, and complained frequently, 
because of fear. We ask you to focus our minds on gratitude, open-mindedness, compassion, and creative energy. Amen. Whether we are feeling balanced in the familiar or unprepared for the interruptions from our usual patterns, God is always present. Even if we do not feel God holding us, we are held. When our thoughts lead us to wonder if God is present, we are not separate from God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. I used to think the wilderness would never end. I called my mom and asked, does time really heal all wounds? Do the pieces ever fall back into place? Does the wilderness go on forever? So she told me about the horizon. She said, there is an edge where the earth meets the sky. And when you're there, you will see daisies in the sidewalk and the sun after the rain. I asked her to draw me a map and she cried because she knew this road was mine to walk. But she promised to wait for me day in and day out for as long as the wilderness raged. So I walked, and it felt like 40 days, and it hurt like 40 nights. And I waved to the people I passed there in the wilderness. We tipped our hats to one another, silently recognizing the weight we each carried. Until one day, I realized the earth always kisses the sky. And this wilderness has turned into a garden and I have made it out alive. And my mother hugged me there at the earth's edge. And she whispered in my ear that God was a gardener and that I had nothing to fear. So if you ever ask for a map, know that God and I will be planting seeds, hoping to turn your wilderness into a garden. For as long as the wilderness rages on, I will never stop looking for you where the earth kisses the sky. The sermonic text for this morning is taken from the book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 14, beginning with verse 10. Let us listen for God's word. As Pharaoh drew near, the Israelites looked back and there were the Egyptians advancing on them. In great fear, the Israelites cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us, bringing us out of Egypt? Is this not the very thing we told you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm 
and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you have only to keep still. Then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, breathe in us the breath of life that we might live. Infuse these broken and incomplete human words with your divine and eternal word. Let your word go forth and accomplish that for which you send it forth, that it might not return empty or void. Let it search each and every one of us to find fertile ground within which it might take root and bear fruit. And as usual, the Lord remind each and every one of us how much you love us. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, let the people of God say, Amen. From the Exodus text read earlier in your hearing, I want to lift up as a subject uh, this morning, go forward go forward. Fear is a major barrier to us accomplishing the purpose of God. Fear can immobilize us. Fear can paralyze us. Fear can tranquilize us. Fear is a major barrier to us being and becoming all that God would have us be. And we see right here in this powerful and provocative and pregnant text how fear begins to set in in the people of God who have been delivered and who are now going out boldly but are being pursued by their former captors. Fear in this text, I believe, uh, presents four options. The first option is suicide. Let's just jump into the sea. Uh, we're outnumbered, uh, uh, we're outgunned, uh, we don't have a chance. So let's just throw in the towel. Let's just cast ourselves into to the sea. Let's commit suicide. Let's just kill ourselves and, and be done with it. And, and, and far too often, even in our contemporary landscape, we, we find uh, many beloveds, many brothers and sisters, many uh, siblings of God choosing this option because life has just become too unbearable. Uh, we, we find ourselves in a situation in which we just want it to be all over with. And, and here we find our ancestors, our spiritual ancestors in the faith being faced with such an option. Uh, we can't win. We're outnumbered. We're too few and they are too many. So let's just cash it in. But there's yet another option that presents itself in the midst of being gripped and ground by fear. And that's the sword. Let's fight. Uh, let, let's, let's, let's fight back. They're coming, they're bringing the fight to us, let us fight. Well, that seems like an option until you realize, as I said before, you are outgunned, you are outmanned. It would be a wholesale slaughter. Now, 
don't get it twisted. I believe in self-defense. I believe we have a right to assert our right to exist. That, that's not what I'm saying this morning. But like the writer of Ecclesiastes, Corleth tells us, there's a time and place for everything under the sun. And now is not the time for the sword because it would just be another form of suicide. Now, now there are many who, who talk bad and, and walk bad and do a lot of woofing who, uh, who, who, who choose this to make themselves look, uh, look bold and courageous and bad when underneath there is animal terror. And it just becomes suicide by homicide. We, we see many who place themselves in, in very dangerous situations because they too have cashed in the towel. Uh, they've thrown in all the, sh the chips and uh, just want it all to be over. It looks like courageousness. It, it looks like being bold, but when it's really fear, I really don't want to go on any longer. So I'm going to place myself in a situation where it is highly probable that I will have my life taken and snuffed out. The option of suicide, the option of the sort, but there's yet another option that is presented to our ancestors in the faith. It is the option of submission. Let's just go back. You know, let's, let's just do what they want us to do. Uh, let's just, let's, let's just return and, and, and just, just, just submit to what Pharaoh and uh, his people want us to do. Now, that, that, on its face initially looks like an option, but how can that be an option when God has just gone through all that God has gone through to deliver you from Pharaoh and his captivity and his oppression? When God has just visited 10 plagues upon your oppressors, when God has just uh, told you to paint some blood on the doorpost so the death angel will pass over and strike down the firstborn of Pharaoh rather than the firstborn of the enslaved and oppressed community. God has allowed you to go out with the wealth of the wicked. And, and now you think God has brought you this far just to leave you between a rock and a hard place? No, submission is not an option at this point. And you can understand how some would uh, reach this conclusion. Uh, Pharaoh ain't coming to play. He's not bringing a gang of hoodlums. He, he's bringing the elite forces of the day. He, he's bringing uh, the Navy SEALs and, and, and Marine Recon and, and Delta Force and, and the Green Berets. He's, he's not coming to play. So you can understand why some would choose this option of let's just turn around. Oh, but I can hear the words of James Cleveland. I don't believe he's brought me this far to lead me. Wherever you may find yourself today, whatever situation you may find yourself in uh, today, know that God has not brought you this far, beloved, to leave you. So we look at the options of suicide, the option of the sword, and the option of submission. Well, there's yet another option, the option of supplication, prayer. Oh, I, I believe in and I know the power of prayer. Uh, the Bible is right when it says uh, uh, that the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Uh, that it is always right for the people of God to pray. I, 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 I affirm and agree and I know the power of prayer. Uh, it's, the old saying is true, the old adage is true that no prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. But now is not the time to join hands and have a prayer meeting. Now is not the time to, to bow our heads and, 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 and to go to God in prayer. I remember the Reverend Hosea Williams, one of Dr. Martin Luther King's lieutenants, saying that after an incident down in Mississippi, so he never closed his eyes for prayer again. He always prayed with his eyes open. We might do well to follow Ancestor Williams' wise counsel uh, on that note. 
But now is not the time for supplication. So, uh, Pastor, if it's not the time for the sword, if it's not the time for suicide, if it's not the time uh, for submission, if it's not the time for supplication, what is it time for? Well, I'm glad you asked because I believe that this text suggests to us that now is the time to surge ahead. Now is the time to go forward. This is not the time to go back. This is not the time to commit suicide. This is not the time to submit to the old forces of deprivation and degradation. Now is the time to surge ahead and to go forward to the place where God would have us go. Now, some people, uh, some people will say, well, you know, that sounds good, but but there are still in uncertainty in front of us. There are still barriers that encompass us about. Surge ahead anyhow. Because it's not ours to worry about the barriers. Ours is to worry about putting mutt in front of Jeff. And Jeff in front of mutt. To keep on moving as the sounds of blackness remind us. To keep on moving. Don't stop. We need to hear the words of that great ancestor Harriet Tubman. If you hear the dogs, keep moving. If you hear them shooting guns, keep moving. If you see the torches, keep moving. Whatever you do, just keep on moving don't stop so we find ourselves rejecting the options of suicide and the sword and submission and supplication we find ourselves giving ourselves over to surging ahead to moving forward to where God would have us be but what has to happen in order for us to move forward. Well, there are a few things I want to lift up for your consideration, and then I'm going to sit down. The first thing is we need inspiration. When we find ourselves encompassed about by danger, when we find ourselves in peril, somebody got to have enough God to stand flat-footed and speak the word of the Lord. Somebody got to stand up in the midst of the mess, in the midst of being pursued uh, by the depredations and degradation of the past by those who want to return us to, uh, to a, a death-dealing way of being in the world. Somebody got to stand up and say, God did not bring us this far to leave us here. God has not abandoned us. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. We, we need inspiration that we find ourselves in the midst of uh, this COVID epidemic and, and, and it wears on you. That our routines have been changed. We can't do the things we used to do in the way that we used to do them. And sometimes we find ourselves falling into despair. And that's when we need to hear the word from the Lord that I will not leave nor forsake you. I'm with you. I'll never leave nor forsake it. I won't abandon you. I'll see you through. We just need to hear a word from the Lord in the midst of the mess. Doesn't mean that the situation will change immediately. It doesn't mean that it would improve immediately. But we began to feel differently and think differently because we know that we are not alone. We need inspiration in the midst of the mess. And, and when we, we receive ins, inspiration... We can engage in the act of elevation. What are you talking about, preacher? Look at, look at verse 16. It says that when Moses cried out uh, to the Lord, the Lord said, what you doing crying out to me? What's in your hand? Lift up what's in your hand. Oh, I tell you, my brothers and sisters, too often we are crying out to God and God is saying, I put something, I place something in your hand. Are we using what's in our hands? If we look closely, if we take another peep, if we do another examination of what God has already blessed us with, we'll see that we have, in many cases, more than enough already in our hands. Are you using what's in your hand this morning? Are you using what God has already given you? Are you making the most of what God has already blessed you with? 
I can hear the Almighty saying this morning, use what's in your hand. Stop worrying about what is in somebody else's hand. Stop worrying about what's in your neighbor's hand or in the person's hands across the street. Use what's in your hands. Moses, stop crying out to me and lift up what's in your hand. And it just might be that if we use what we got, we may get more than we already have. In addition to inspiration and elevation, there's elongation. Elongation means to stretch out. He, he says, Moses, stretch out your hands. See, sometimes we got to, we got to risk being uncomfortable. We have to risk discomfort. We have to move outside of our comfort zone. Stretching, stretching is, is, is by definition uncomfortable because you're doing something that you naturally wouldn't do. You're, you're stretching. You're, you're causing body parts to do things that they, they, they are not used to doing. And, 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 and to go where God wants us to go, we got to stretch ourselves. We have to move out of our comfort zones. We have to be we have to become comfortable with being uncomfortable. Oh, God is calling us, God is calling us to stretch ourselves, to stretch beyond what we, we become used to over years and, and decades and even centuries. God is saying, if you're going to go to this new place, if you're going to live in this new way that I want you to live, you got to stretch yourself. We have to stretch ourselves in our churches. We have to stretch ourselves in our communities. We have to stretch ourselves in our civic life. We have to stretch ourselves in our politics. We've got to stretch out to allow God to do with us what only God can do, to take us where only God can take us. And when we engage in this this stretching, this, these acts of elongation, these acts of, of, of becoming comfortable with being uncomfortable, we can begin to get separation. We can begin to put distance between ourselves and the old ways of the past, the old consciousness of the past, the old culture of the past that kept us divided and separated, that, that benefited the, the few at the expense of the many. We can begin to put separation between ourselves and these death dealing ways of being in the world to move toward a life affirming way of being in the world. And as we go out boldly, know this, that the agents and merchants of death are not going to sit on the sidelines while we run touchdowns. They're going to pursue us. There will be a backlash, but keep on moving. Keep on putting mud in front of Jeff in spite of knowing that God will make a way out of no way. It's, it's not ours to be concerned about how uh, the Red Sea is going to be parted. It's not ours to be concerned about how the barriers be, uh, will be removed. That's God's job. Our job is to keep on moving. Anyhow, you, you may recall the story uh, of the crossing of the Jordan, which takes place uh, in the book of Joshua. And God told the, the priest to to step on in anyhow in the spring of the year when the flood waters are raging. It wasn't until the priests actually stepped in the waters to their feet actually struck the waters that God cut off the waters at its source. I tell you, some, if we wait until the coast is clear, we will never get what we need to go. Sometimes we just got to step right on in the midst of the mess anyhow, trusting God to do what only God can do. We have to put separation between ourselves and the old death-dealing ways of the past. And when God has led us through the Red Sea, when God has delivered us, when God has led us with a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, and we've gotten to the other side, and we can sing with Aretha Franklin, Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Martha, don't you moan. You see, Pharaoh's army got drowned. Drowned in the Red Sea. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Martha, don't you moan. If I could, I surely would stand on the rock where Moses stood. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Martha, 
don't you moan. When we find ourselves having gone through the waters and having not been drowned or burned by the fire, and we find ourselves on the other side looking at the bodies of our former captives floating uh, in the sea. We shouldn't just get on the other side and resume business as usual. We shouldn't just get on the other side and not acknowledge this great and mighty act that God has wrought. When we get on the other side, it's a time for celebration. It's a time to acknowledge this great thing that God has done. As I rem I'm reminded of celebration. I I'm reminded of uh, when the walls of apartheid came down and there was a celebration and, and uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, the first president of a post-apartheid South Africa, and the great bishop, Bishop Desmond Tutu, uh, they joined one another on the stage and, and when they got up there, they didn't dance the square dance. No, that, they didn't dance the waltz, but they danced the toy toy. You've seen them dance the toy toy. They, they danced the dance of their ancestors. They, they went back and they, they pulled the power of their ancestors forward. They, they danced the dance of those who had lived and died under apartheid, but yet had infused them with the flame of freedom. They danced the dance of their people. We've got to learn how to dance the dance of our ancestors, those who bore their burdens in the heat of the day, those who refused to give up, those who died without seeing the promise realized, but yet bequeathed that promise and that flame of freedom to us that we might keep on keeping on, that we might keep putting one foot in front of the other and marching toward freedom in spite of being pursued and in spite of the death dealers to trust God and to lean not to our own, own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge him, knowing that God will direct our paths. Keep going forward. Keep moving. Don't stop. Keep putting one foot in front of the other knowing that God is with us and never, will never leave nor forsake us. Keep moving forward. Amen. Please join me in prayer. Eternal One, life has felt unfamiliar and unsteady for many months, taking our comforts and ways of doing life together away from us. You have been there knowing that although there is nothing new under the sun, this feels new, challenging and upside down for us. We cannot grieve, pursue justice, and find comfort through the familiar ways. May your compassion and breath be a balm when there are no words, and when there are no familiar rituals. Give us familiar memories of being together, drawing our awareness to the experience of the senses from comforting and peaceful times. May those comforting memories prepare and sustain us as we endure the continued challenges with faithful resiliency. Energize us as we explore new and creative ways to express our faith, comfort those who are mourning, seek justice, and do everything in love. Remind us that you are found in the inconsistencies of life. Anchor our thoughts when we experience a restless mind, so that instead of becoming agitated, you are drawing our awareness to truth, gratitude, openness, and compassion. And now we pray together as a presbytery, as Jesus taught us saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I will come to you in the silence. I will lift you from all fear. You will hear my voice like then you have my choice. Be still and know I am here. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me, I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am hope for all who are hopeless. I am much for all who will see. Shadows of the night, I will be your light. Come and rest in me. Do not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home. I love you and you are mine. I am strength for all the despairing, healing for the ones who dwell in shame. The blind will see, the lame will all run free, and all will know my name. I'll not be afraid, I am with you. I have called you each by name. Come and follow me. I will bring you home, I love you and you are mine. And now as we go out trying to seek justice, trying to be present for those who are mourning, trying to be present with ourselves as we acknowledge our own grief and our own loss and our own new ways of being. May this have been a time where we could center ourselves and prepare to explore new and creative ways to be the church, to be people of faith who are resilient. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you.